so that you could understand who we are. We are so grateful, Lord, that you have been with us. We are, we are our Father. You are the Father of truth. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There is no Father like you, Lord. We are our other Father. We can cry to you, Lord. We can talk to you at any given time, Lord. We don't have to make an appointment, Lord, to talk to you, Lord. You love us unconditionally. We thank you for your dear son that you sent, Lord, to come and die in our stead, Lord, so that we could have eternal life. Whoever believes in the son has life. Thank you for the life today, Lord, that we have. Thank you for your blood that runs in our veins today, Father God. We are grateful, Lord. No disease has a place in the age. Thank you, Father God. Your word says, by your stripes we are healed, Lord. I speak healing in this house this day, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, no sickness has a place in our bodies. Those who are in hospital, Father God, let them remember that there's a name called Jesus. The name that is above all other names. The name when you call, demons tremble. The name when it is called, Father God, all strongholds come tumbling down. Strongholds come tumbling down even now, Father God, in this house, Father God, whatever stronghold is here. Yes, Lord, you made a public spectacle out of it. You ashamed it. You disarmed it. All powers and principalities, Lord, you are above them. Yes, Lord, you are our strength, you are our shield. When we call upon you, Lord, you respond. Thank you, Father God. You are gracious. You are so kind to us, Father God. We have not known any other God. We give you glory this morning, Lord. We raise our hands in awe of you, Lord. We say, take over, Holy Spirit. Take over. We invite you into this place this morning. Without you, we cannot do this. This is all you, Holy Spirit, move in this place this morning. We invite you, take over the, the, the preaching, take over the singing, Father God. It is all about you, it is all for you. We exalt you as our God in the mighty name of Jesus. We bring every thought into captive and anything that the devil lay ahead of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. We pray for families. We pray for progress in our families, Father God. All the strongholds come tumbling down in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That new castle is booming with business, Father God. Those shops can be closing, Lord. But when, when the world is saying there's a casting down, Lord, we will say there is a lifting up. Yes, you remember Zion today. You will remember new castle today. You will take us out captivity. Yes. yes, Lord, we'll be like them, that dream, Lord. That's what your word says this morning. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory. We pray, Lord, Father God, for our pastor, anointing, Father God, as he gets ready for the word in the mighty name of Jesus. Your word says the entrance of your word gives light, brings Amen. light. Thank you that there will be light shed upon our lives this morning. Thank you, Lord, that we will delight in the word, Lord. That we will stay in the way. Amen. Those who stay in your way, Lord, your way says they can ask for anything and it shall be done unto them. We choose to stay unto, unto your feet this morning, Lord, and listen to you and hear you speak Thank through you, our Lord. pastor in the mighty name Thank of you. Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Take over. You are most welcome in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we give God a a good hand of, of praise this morning. A welcome to our spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We welcome to our spirit. Take over. Amen. Good morning, church. Morning. We will enter into our praise and worship in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs>
ice of a leg. Neither shall I suffer lack. I am abounding in the blessings of God. All good things are being added to me daily. In Jesus' name. Things attached to them. 
Amen. Amen. Now we find that in this case, in this case, we find one of God's gifts having a string attached to it. So there's a string attached to a child. In other words, there's a responsibility that God requires on your part as a parent to your children. There is a string attached. Amen. 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 So since God has given you the precious gift of a child, He has also given you an awesome responsibility. Now these are the strings that I'd like to remind you of is that you as a parent and as I'm speaking to them, I'm speaking to the church at large, I'm speaking to every parent. This is for you too. You have a responsibility to train up your children in the ways of the Lord. Yeah. The book of Proverbs tells us, train up a child in the way that he should go and he will not depart from it when he is old. So our responsibility as parents is to train up our children in the ways of the Lord. So that one day too, as our children grow and they become of age, they too may make that great profession of faith, receiving Christ Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We, listen, we cannot save our children. It's the lives that we lead, that we lead, that we live, that the ch children will follow the example of the parents. If a child does not see the the parent going to church, you can never expect the child to go to church. Amen. If a child does not see the parent praying, you cannot expect the child to pray. Amen. If the child does not see, does not see or hear the parent speaking about having faith in God, you cannot expect the child to do the same. So there's a responsibility on the parent's part. We have a responsibility. Say amen to that. In fact, to neglect to bring your children to the house of God and involve and uh, encourage your children to engage in the activities in the house of God is actually to kill your child. Yeah. Because you're not feeding your child the spiritual food that they need. You're not, come on, talk to me somebody. In other words, you're being a bad parent. So you've got to make sure that you train your children up in the ways of the Lord. The second one is to be an example of Christian living both inside and outside the home. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thirdly, to provide for, to protect and nurture your children. That is your responsibility as a parent. And fourthly, is to make them a part of your family, sharing with them your love, your time, and your life. Hallelujah. That's your responsibility as a parent. And lastly, is to teach your children to love the same Jesus that you love. Is to teach your children to love the same Jesus that you love and to serve, obey, and honor Him with all their heart. How often do we tell our children about Jesus? How often do we, you know, encourage our children to develop a relationship with Jesus? How often do we train them to serve Him, to obey Him, and to honor Him? How often do we remind our children that He is the brother that sticketh, He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother? Hallelujah. Amen. So God, your heavenly Father, is always with you to provide you with the strength, encouragement, love, and wisdom that you need. So that as we see these parents bringing the child, to dedicate the child to the Lord, it is an acknowledgement on their part that they need the grace of God and the wisdom of God to bring this child up the ways of the Lord because we must understand that as long as you are a parent there's a responsibility that you have for that life hallelujah that life has been entrusted to your hands and you have a duty to ensure that you honor God with that life say amen to that hallelujah 
And I want to encourage the parents, yes, the Lord will provide you all the strength, encouragement, wisdom, everything that you need. And in your daily life, I encourage you to go to Him and He will provide for all that you need. He's a provider, the same God who provided you with this child. He's the same God who provides you with the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding to bring this child up. He's the same God who will provide for this child. Say amen to that. Amen. amen. So this morning, um, we are dedicating this child as much as we are also dedicating the parents as well. Because the, children, the parents are dedicating their lives to bringing up this child in the ways of God. Hallelujah. So by coming up here this morning, Brother Sonny and Sister Michaela, you as parents are publicly saying that you want to raise your child in a Christ-honoring home and are asking God's blessing on your ministry as Christian parents. Parenting is a ministry. Hallelujah. It's a ministry. So I'd like you to listen as I ask you some questions. And in ask, answering these questions, you are making promises unto God. You're not making them unto me, nor are you making them unto your child, but you're making them to God himself who is holy. Amen. If you are willing to commit your children to the Lord and to dedicate yourself to raising him in God's strength and for his honor and glory, then by saying we do to the following promises as I ask you now. Do you recognize your child as a gift from God and give God thanks for blessing your life with his gift? Do you then dedicate your child to the Lord who gave you your child? Do you pledge as Christian parents that you will bring up your child in a Christian home looking to God for wisdom, strength, and guidance? Do you promise to give your child every possible benefit of home, school, and church? Do you promise to pray for your child on a regular basis, realizing that it is only with God's hand upon his life that he can be truly blessed? Do you ask God's blessings upon the life of your child to guide God and direct him through all his years? Hallelujah. Praise God. Your heart has been in these promises that you've dedicated yourself to raising a child that God can use mightily in his kingdom. Amen. And to the whole church, you dedicate yourselves too to this child. Hence, I remind you, Brother Sonny and Sister Michaela, you are not alone on this journey. God has also surrounded you with a family, the family of God, to encourage you and to strengthen you. Amen. So, the church too, do you dedicate yourselves to encourage this family? and to pray for this family as they now dedicate their lives to bring up this child, baby Elijah, in the ways of the Lord. Your answer is? Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, I have a letter that I will give to both of you on behalf of your son. And one day when he is of age, I would like you to open this letter and to read it to him. It's a personal letter from myself and Pastor Sharon to the baby. And you can read to the baby when he is old enough that he can understand. And he can remember this day, the day of his dedication. So this is my letter to you. Amen. As we dedicate the baby, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 
and his father get the church then and stretch your hands towards this wonderful family. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you, Father. We bless you, praise you. Father, we honor you, oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you. Oh, Brother Sonny Mansu, Sister Michaela Mansu, we anoint this baby, Lord. We dedicate the baby unto your service. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We anoint the family too, Father, that even they too, Father, will be blessed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We anoint the parents of God and dedicate them to you. Grant them wisdom, grant them understanding, Lord. Grant them knowledge to bring up this child in the ways of the Lord. This child is a wonderful and a glorious future, Father. And we pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that, Lord, you will protect this child. We plead the blood of Jesus upon this child, and we pray that this child will grow in spirit and in grace, and in favor with you, O oh God, in favor with man. In the name of Jesus, just as your word declares, O oh God, speaking of Jesus, that the child grew in strength, grew in spirit, and grew in favor. Even so, do we speak the same over this child. In Jesus' blessed name, Father, we thank you that this child's life has been provided for, that you, Father God, have preordained the plans and purposes with the life of this child, that you will raise this child up and use this child mightily for the glorification of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May he be a mighty warrior in the kingdom of God. We ask all these mercies in Jesus' blessed name. And the people of God said, Amen. I present to you as we turn around, I present to you family, baby Elijah, Sonny Mansu. The Lord bless you. Bless you. Hallelujah. Come and give the Lord praise. Come and give the Lord Because the blood speaks of the resurrection. 
if lack or poverty tries to take up residence in your life, you apply the blood, declare that the curse is over in your life. Come on, we've, we've got to get to that understanding, that we've got to get to that place, that God wants you healthy, God wants you wealthy. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Come on, listen, the poor cannot help the poor. God wants you wealthy so that you can be a blessing to those in need. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So when lack tries to take up residence in your life, you apply the blood. You are a covenant child of a covenant God. God has established a covenant of prosperity with you. Come and talk to me. He said, Beloved, above all things, I pray that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Hallelujah. So you've got to declare that the curse is over in your life and that the enemy is defeated and you claim the triumph that Christ won on your behalf. You claim the triumph. The victory is yours. Amen. I closed with this statement last week. That Jesus paid too high a price for you to accept anything less than total and complete victory. Yeah. What are you going to put up with in your life? Hallelujah. Romans 8 verse 11. The Bible says this. Thank you Lord Jesus. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Yes, you have a mortal body, but God can give. Come and talk to me. The Spirit of God gives that body life. Yes. Praise God. Listen, let us go to quickly to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I want to read something here to you. You see, the devil thought that when he had overcome Adam, and Adam had given in to temptation, and Adam fell, the devil thought that he had won over Adam. Because the Bible says, in Adam all die, but in Christ all are made alive. Come on, talk to me somebody. Because of Adam, all humanity has died. Because Humanity is, when you are born, you are born into this world, as we saw that the dedication of the baby, all right? That baby has been dedicated to God, that God will protect that baby, that God will bless and grace the parents with wisdom, with knowledge, with understanding, revelation, to bring that child up in the ways of God, so that that child can come out of that fallen nature. Because all are born into sin. But in Christ, in Christ, when you receive Christ, you receive eternal life. You receive that right standing with God. That's why I say it is for, you know, when you do baptism, it's for children or uh, those that are of age to understand what it means. They, are, they can account for their actions. But you cannot do that to a child. A child is still God's. Come and talk to me, somebody. But it's what the parent feeds the child with that would speak in the end. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. So all humanity is born into that into that nature, into that sinful nature. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. God gives a gift. And the gift he's given us is Jesus Christ, his son. Having received Jesus, having received Christ. We have received eternal life. Say amen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the Bible from verse 8 says, We are hard pressed on every side. In other words, listen, this life is not an easy life. But you must understand that even though it may not be an easy life, you have within you burden removing, yoke destroying power. That is resurrection life that is in you. Resurrection power that is within you. Talk to me somebody. 
He says, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. You see, it doesn't matter what comes your way, you will not be crushed. Amen. Amen. We are perplexed, but not in despair. You're never in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Why? Watch here. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. He's speaking about resurrection power. Are you hearing me, somebody? It means the enemy may have tried to bury you, but praise God, you cannot be buried. You are alive in Christ Jesus. You have come out of the tomb. Tell your neighbor, you've come out of the tomb. You are alive just as he's alive, you are alive. Hallelujah. Because of Adam, all humanity were born, I told you, born into sin. All have sinned and all have fallen short of the glory of God. It's Romans chapter 3. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Satan thought that he buried humanity, but praise God, Jesus Christ came and he took us out of the grave. He took us out of death and brought us into life. You have resurrection power on the inside of you. Tell your neighbor, I'm no more putting up with the normal. I was born for the supernatural. I have supernatural life in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. How? By his spirit that dwells in you. By his spirit. When you made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life, the Holy Spirit imparted to you the same power that raised up Jesus from the dead. That was imparted to you. Hallelujah. That's the power that is above every principality and every power. That's residing on the inside of you. You are made alive together with Jesus. Tell somebody, I was made alive together with Jesus. I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that's living on the inside of you. Are you hearing me, somebody? That's the same spirit that's living on the inside of you. That spirit is the spirit, it's the spirit of life. The spirit gives life. Talk to me, somebody. Wow, praise God. Can you think of that for a moment? That same power is living on the inside of you. Is it at all possible that any sickness or any disease, no matter how bad, could even stand a chance against that power that's in you? That power that could raise up somebody from the dead. Talk to me. That power that raised up Jesus from the dead, that power is living on the inside of you. Come on, talk to me. Hallelujah. That power is living on the inside. Tell you, it's living on the inside of me. It's living on the inside. Praise God. No sickness, no disease can stand a chance against you. Talk to me, somebody. Because, listen, this is the point I'm trying to make, that through this resurrection power you have on the inside of you, you are able to live healed. You are able to live healed. Talk to me. That means whatever is, whatever is happening in your body today, the resurrection power of Christ is available to work. Listen, Jesus died so that you could live. He died so that you could live. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen, you are not qualified to bear sickness, sin, disease, and demons. You are not qualified to bear that. Jesus, listen, Jesus did all that so that you don't have to bear it. 
He did it on your behalf. That sickness, that diagnosis, that diagnosis, he, he bore it on your behalf so that you don't have to bear. You don't have come and talk to him, somebody. He took it on himself. So that you don't have to bear it. So that you listen, that crown of thorns. Listen, you don't have to bear the thorns in this life. He's given you the victor's crown. Come on, that victory that he won, that victory that he purchased for you freely by himself, yes. by his blood, he's given it to you. It's up to you to receive it. It's up to you to claim it. It's up to you to lay a hold of it. It's up to you to appropriate it by faith. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen. Our part is to resist everything that the enemy would ever try to bring up against us. We are to resist. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor your job is to resist. The Bible tells us, draw near to God, draw close to God, he'll draw close unto you. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. You see, so the, the responsibility of a believer, the responsibility that you and I have is to resist Satan. How do you resist him? By the word of God. You resist him how? With the blood of Jesus. Tell him, tell him what the word of God says the blood of Jesus has done for you. That's how you resist him. Every time he comes up against you, you come on, you take the life is in the blood. The blood is a covenant. You gotta come and talk to me. When David, when David stood before Goliath, David understood that he had a covenant with God. Take note, all listen, all Jewish men, they were circumcised, but now our circumcision is no longer of the flesh but of the spirit. So that means, listen, you understand that now the old has been cut off. The Adamic nature has been cut off from you. As in Adam, listen, as in Adam all die in Christ, all shall be made alive, all live. Hallelujah. The old has been cut away. Tell your neighbor, the old has been cut away. Yeah. You see, healing is in the covenant. It means sickness was cut off from you. It means poverty was cut off from you. It's a curse. It's been cut off. Amen. To be cut off means, listen, you've been separated from that. You are no longer attached to it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And to walk in resurrection power, we are to, listen, we are to believe, speak, and act. Believe, speak, and act on our healing. Doesn't matter what you're feeling in your body, you go to the Word of God. By His stripes I was healed. By His stripes I was healed. I am the healed of the Lord. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Listen, you've got to expect the power of God. That same power that raised up Jesus from the dead, expect that power to work in your life. Listen, I'm, I'm in no ways against doctors and physicians. I respect them. I have great respect for them because we fight the same battle. We're in the same battle. When you go to a doctor, you find very really often people have so much confidence. A doctor will tell you, listen, you take this medication and in three, from three days time you, you should feel better. And you find that the person faithfully takes the medication and then what happens? Three days later they feel better. I once spoke to a pediatrician who said this to me. He said this, he says, to get a child healed, you've got to work through the parent. To get a child, come on, Jesus demonstrated that too. Remember the, the one who came and the daughter was ill. Remember even Jairus? You remember that? And they came to Jesus. And Jesus healed them with words. And this 
This pediatrician said this to me. He says, no, you've got you to get the parent's confidence. And you understand, they understand it's a mind thing. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. That's why even in our lives, it's a mindset. If your mindset is, oh, I'm sick, I'm going to die, it comes with this terminal disease, I'm going to die, you're going to die. But if your mindset is the same spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in me, he raised up Christ Jesus from the dead to quicken my mortal body, his spirit is dwelling within me, talk to me somebody. Hallelujah. It's a mindset. Start to program your mind. Listen, people may laugh at you and think that you are strange, but listen, you are a peculiar people. You are a peculiar people. You can speak to yourself in the mirror and say, I refuse to be sick. I will not be sick. Come on, talk to me, somebody. If you're going to put up with it, then you then Come on. You've got to get to a point where you say, enough is enough. I'm not going to put up with this thing. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. It's the same with poverty and lack. If you, if you feel okay, no, I was meant to be this way. It's a mindset. You've got to change your mindset. Stop blaming the family and society and everybody else. It's a mindset. You've got to get your mind right. Tell them to get your mind right. Hallelujah. You've got to expect that power to work in your body. Expect that power to work in your life. Amen. Listen, this, the resurrection power that God has given us in Christ, it gives us... Um, it gives us Zoe. Zoe life. Zoe life is the God kind of life. You have life as God has it. Just as the Father has life in Himself, He's given that same life to you and I to partake of. No longer are you in the fallen state, but He's imparted to you His life, eternal life. Listen, Revelation 1 verse 18 says, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Jesus came to bring us new life. Hallelujah. He came to give us the God kind of life. This, listen, living in Zoe life means that God keeps on making life in our bodies. God keeps on making life in our bodies. That's what Paul was speaking about when he says, he, that same spirit will quicken your mortal body every day. It's a daily, it's a daily walk with God. You've got to spend time with Him daily. You've got to pray daily. You've got to read the scriptures daily. Meditate on the scriptures daily. Because in the scriptures there is life. What you're doing is you're feeding your spirit with life. Spend more time reading the Bible and less time reading the magazines. Spend more time hearing what God is saying and less of what the world and the press is saying. Talk to me somebody. You'll be amazed how much life Listen, this word will give you life. That regardless of what report may come your way, you will speak this word to that. You'll retaliate. You won't be quiet. You won't be silent. You won't be afraid. You will not be afraid. Talk to me, somebody. Jesus has given us a spirit of fear, a spirit of faith. He's removed fear from us. All fear, all doubt, all disbelief is gone. But faith has come. Jesus has released faith to us. Amen. You cannot be afraid. Tell your neighbor, I cannot be afraid. I refuse to be afraid. I'm a child of faith. Christ has given me faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You've got to, you've got to activate it in your life. You've got to say what the word is saying. Say what God is saying. Amen. Amen. Let me give an example. You can say, because of Jesus, let's just say this to, together. Because of Jesus' resurrection life in me, 
I am getting stronger and stronger every day. My eyes are seeing more clearly. My ears are hearing better. My mind is functioning perfectly. Every bone, every organ, every nerve and ligament in my body is being daily supercharged with the glory of God. The same spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead is now dwelling in me and is constantly making alive my mortal flesh. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Amen. You've got to say these things. You know, many people are worried, they're afraid of getting older, etc. And then they think, oh no, we've missed out so much on life. Listen, you live the best years of your life when you serve the Lord. It doesn't matter whether you're young or whether you're old. Come and talk to me. When you serve the Lord, you still feel young at heart. Talk to me, somebody. That's why you've got to listen. You've got to live this thing. Live it out. Speak it. Amen. Yes, you know, you may go to the doctor, the physician, and they tell you something about probably your kidneys or whatever it is. You just say, I have resurrection power on the inside of me. I'll believe the report of God. I'm trusting God for new kidneys. I'm trusting God. Talk to me, somebody. God can do it. God can do it. God can do it. Amen. You see, resurrection power is made available unto us freely, but we must receive it by faith. You have to receive it by faith. We must embrace a daily recognition of the life of God in us. Daily. Meditate on that daily. Tell yourself daily, I have the life of God in me. When you can understand that, then you, you, you know, it gives you a different mindset. As I just shared that confession with you, my mind is working perfectly. I cannot be confused. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Ideas are coming to me. Listen, that's how you operate as a child of God. You're in partnership with your Heavenly Father. Amen. Trust God to give you wisdom. Trust God to direct your path. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. You understand? So when you commune with God, you speak to God, He lead you to the right places. He lead you to the right people. You of course, come on, talk to me, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, this is my reality. Is my reality. Amen. Amen. Every day you wake up, you say, I have the resurrection life of God in me today. Every day. Every day celebrated. Every day celebrated. Amen. Hallelujah. No demon in hell can stand up against you. Amen. You have the power of God at work on the inside of you. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. And resurrection power allows you to live freely. Resurrection power sets you free. John's Gospel tells us, if the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. Amen. So resurrection power frees you from the bondages of sin and from your past. Resurrection power frees you from the bondages of sin and your past. You see, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God imparted, I told you, eternal life. Zoe life. His life. What He done? He removed the past from you. Hallelujah. He's freed you from that bondage of sin. He's freed you from your past. Amen. Your part in the crucifixion of Jesus, your part, the part that you play, is the one that's 
recorded in Philippians 3 verse 13. Forgetting those things that are behind you and reaching forward to what is set before you. What is ahead of you. Forget the things that are behind you. In other words, forget about the past. Forget about the yesterday and reach towards your destiny. Your destiny is in Christ. Your destiny is in God. Talk to me somebody. Your place is in Christ. Oh, that I might know him and the glory of his resurrection. Hallelujah. Why did Jesus shed his blood? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Why did Jesus shed his blood? Listen, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 tells us, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That means, listen, Jesus shed his blood to wash away your yesterday, to remove your yesterday from your life. Or oh, talk to me, somebody. There's a day that you have. It's called a day of your rest. It is today, oh, today that you might hear him. Harden not your heart as in the days of Mary, but talk to me, somebody. He shed his blood to remove your yesterday. He shed his blood to remove your past. You do not have a past. Don't look back. Look forward. Look ahead. Yes. Hallelujah. The old things of yesterday are forgotten. Romans chapter 6 verse 4 tells us, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. Even so also we should walk in newness of life. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The old sinner has died. You've become a new creation on the inside. You are full of the resurrection life of God in Christ. Amen. Sin, disobedience and living a selfish carnal life will keep that resurrection power from flowing in your life. Are you, you know, hearing me? Living in a life, living a life of sin, living a life of disobedience, and living a life of self. You see, let me tell you something. This life of a believer, it's a life of dying to self and living for Christ. You die to self. Everything that you do, you do not do out of selfish ambition. You do it out of love for Christ, out of love for the kingdom. In other words, whatever you do, you always kingdom minded, kingdom focused. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you are not supposed to live a selfish life, a carnal life, a life that is based on the things of this world. Listen, we are of another world. We are not of this world. We do not set our affection on the things of this world. We set our affection on things above when Christ is seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Sin will separate you from the power of God even though you're born again. See, many times someone confesses the Lord Jesus and they receive him as their Lord and Savior, but they continue in the old sinful, the sinful nature, the sinful life. They continue living in sin. Therefore, you'll never experience the resurrection power of Christ. So you've got to reckon yourself to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God. That's, this is how it works. You reckon yourself that I'm dead to that thing. And how do you do it? Listen, you, you cannot overcome sin by trying to stop sinning. You cannot overcome sin by trying to stop sinning. You cannot. You overcome it by walking after the new life God has put within you. You acknowledge that there's a new life I have within me. You acknowledge that there's a new me. The old me has died. You reckon yourself to be dead to that. And you walk, you walk according 
to what the Word of God tells you. The world may tell you, yeah, but you know you still look the same. Yes, on the outside I may, I may look the same, but on the inside I'm a changed man, I'm a changed woman. I have another spirit on the inside of me. It's no longer the spirit that has died, but it's the spirit that has been given life, eternal life, through Jesus Christ. He has taken up residence in me. I have been, come and talk to me, I've been crucified with Christ. And now I live with Christ. Hallelujah. The old me is in the tomb. The new me is out of the tomb. I'm living a glorious life. Yes. Hallelujah. You walk in this new life. The word of God says you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. See yourself that way. That I'm in right, I'm in right standing with God. I can speak to my father. And I know that he hears me talk to me somebody. I know that he loves me. I know that he plans only good for me. That means, listen, even if you were to get a bad report, maybe you were expecting something to happen and it didn't happen the way you expected it to. Understand, it's always happening the way God planned it. It always happens the way God planned it. It may be not my expectation. I'm expecting this, but listen, yes, God may not have planned it. So even if I get a bad report and it doesn't go the way I expected it to, I can still thank God because God, my Father, my Heavenly Father, my Eternal Father, has it all in His plan. He knows which doors to close to for me. He knows which doors to open for me. Are you hearing me, somebody? When doors are closing, it doesn't mean that that's the end of my life. It doesn't mean that God has rejected me. It doesn't mean that God has abandoned me. It only means that God has got something better in store for me. Are you telling me somebody? Hallelujah. You're still in his plan. Talk to me. You're in the plan of God. Hallelujah. To business people, maybe you lost a customer. Maybe you lost a contract. Maybe you lost a sale. So what? Maybe you lost a job. Maybe you lost a home. So what? Talk to me, somebody. Can I get somebody to say, so what? Oh, oh yeah. Hallelujah. So what? I may lose one, but ten are coming. I may lose one, but ten are coming. Talk to me, somebody. Karo Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, you've got to praise God. Whether it's going good, whether it's going bad, you've got to praise God. Don't be, listen, you, don't, you are not supposed to be a month-end Christian. No. You get those month-end believers. You get the month-end believer. The minute the phone goes off, Woo, praise the Lord, then then you... And then as soon as the devil orders start break off here from the 7th of the month, from the 7th until the 29th of the month, you are in limbo. Oh. Everything you can say is just sad. You know, everything is just, listen, you do not, uh, listen. He's not salary Jaira, he's Jehovah Jaira. The salary is not your provider. The money in the bank is not your provider. Jehovah God is your provider. Are you hearing me, somebody? It means whether I have, whether I don't have. He's still Jehovah Jireh. He's still the Lord, my provider. He still has me on his agenda. He still has someone talk to me, somebody. Every day of my life, God is mindful of me. You've got to remind yourself that God is mindful of me. God has visited me. How has he visited me? I see it in the gospel. He who spared not his only son, but freely gave him up for me. He's mindful of me. God saw that I was dead in sin. And God said, Noah, I cannot see you call that way. That was not my plan for Johnny. That was not my plan for Dolly. Oh no, that was not my plan. I have a plan. I'm going to send my son. My son will make your son. My son will bring you back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Tell your neighbor, I'm not a, I'm, I am not a weak Christian. I'm a powerful Christian. Washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. I'm anointed with the Holy Spirit of God. Full of the life of God. I have the life of God in me. I have the word of God in me. within his being shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water is the word of God. When you have the word of God living on the inside of you, come and talk to me somebody. You speak life. Life will be just flowing, 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 flowing. It means nothing will keep you down. Nothing will bury you because of resurrection power. The Bible says a righteous man may fall seven times but he rise again. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm here to speak to somebody. Yes, you may have fallen in 2020. It may not have been your year, but this is 2021. You've got to catch your wake up. God has brought you into a better year. God has brought you into something better. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I'm walking in this newness of life. I'm walking in newness of life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen, as you, as you decide to walk in this new life, because this, listen, this is your mirror. This book, this word reflects who you truly are. As you keep your, your eyes focused on this word, and you walk in accordance with this word, you overcome every obstacle that the enemy can ever bring up against you. Just by walking according to what the word says. What you do, listen, when you start doing what the word says, you are taking that thing and you're putting it under your foot, under your control. Because now you are the word. The word becomes you. Come and talk to me, the word becomes you. So take the first step today. Hallelujah. Let us say this together. Say, Lord Jesus, I desire to experience the power to live by this new life every day of my life. By a quality decision of my heart, I put down the dictates of sin. I declare myself dead to it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. I will spend time in prayer. I will spend time in prayer. And in the word today. And in the word today. As, I do, As I do. I believe. I believe. I'll receive. I receive. A Holy Ghost refreshing. Holy Ghost. In my life. In my life. I, believe. I believe. I'll begin to live out. The resurrection power that Christ has placed in me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You've been set apart. You've been set apart. You've been set free from sin. You've been set free from shame. You've been set free from living in the past. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. My past is gone and forgotten. I've been set free from fear, worry, and anxiety. Hallelujah. Praise God. Give the Lord praise. Fear has been defeated in your life. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You've not received a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. A sound mind. Say this with me. My mind is sound. I make sound decisions. By the spirit of God dwelling within me. My mind is clear. I see clearly. I hear clearly. The voice of the Spirit. The voice of the Spirit. 
Jesus. You see, when God took Israel out of Egypt and he was bringing them into Canaan, the Lord God spoke and he commanded them his instructions. Do not intermingle with them, lest they draw your heart away from me. You all quiet with me this morning. You see, anything and anybody that would draw your heart away from God and doing what God requires you to do is not fruitful for your life. It's true. You want to see the power of God and you want to see God coming through. God says, be separated. Be holy for I am holy. You see, it's in your setting yourself apart, in reckoning yourself to be set apart for Him, that you'll see His power at work in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying, son? He says, come out from among them and be separate. Come out. Wow, I like these words. Come out. Because listen, God can see where you are. He can see where you are. And you say, Lord, come through for me. And God is saying, come out. You see, his word is to you. Come out. You say, God, come through for me. God is not going to come through for you where you are. You've got to come out from among them. Come out. Come out and be holy. Come out. Take that step out. He says, come out from among them and be holy. It means come out. You see, he's telling you come. And he's telling you out. The thing that you think you are meddled in and you are, you are imprisoned by, he's telling you, you are out of it. Come out. You remember Jesus call, calling Lazarus from the dead? He said, Lazarus, come forth. He said, come out, come forth. Why? Because he has life, his resurrection power in the word of God to bring you out of your circumstances, to bring you out of your misery, to bring you out of your pain, to bring you out of your sickness, to bring you out of your infirmity. He says, come out. Come means, he's telling you, come to where I am. When you come to where he is, you are coming out and you are moving into something better. You are moving into something better. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to close with this. Just think on this for a moment. Many of us have moved, you know, you've moved house before. Amen. You've moved house before. Hallelujah. How many of you have moved house? Let me see. How many of you have? You've moved house. There's nobody that has never moved house. Everybody's moved house. And when you move house, there's so much excitement and there's so much expectation and there's so much joy. There's so much expectation. There's so much joy. That even when you move into the new place, man, you're bubbling with joy. It's a joy for you. You see, the day you receive Jesus, you move in from that beautiful state. You, you move in to a bigger kingdom, a greater kingdom, a greater city, city of the living God, Mount Zion, the holy city. You are a citizen of Zion. You are a city of Zion. 
and in Zion. Come and talk to me. There's one who's seated on the throne. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. His name is Jesus. He's brought you into this kingdom where he protects you, where he watches over you, where he provides for you, where he only has good for you. You've moved in to this kingdom. When you move in your earthly house, you've got to go look for boxes everywhere under the sun to pack all your baggage. And when you move, then you realize how much baggage you really have. And because when you look at your baggage, you get tired. Just the thought of moving and unpacking all that baggage is a daunting task. But when God moves you to his house, you come without baggage. You come without baggage. You come as you are. You come as you are to receive everything that he already has provided. All he says, have faith. Have faith. You are a child of faith. Say, I'm a child of faith. Hallelujah. No more worry for you. I say, no more worry for you. Worry is God. You, there's no fear for you. You're not afraid of tomorrow. You're not afraid of next month, next year. No, you're not. You're a person of faith. You're full of faith. You understand that tomorrow will be better than today. Today is actually far better than yesterday. Hallelujah. We have resurrection power on the inside of us. Are you ready to embrace it? I cannot do it for you. You've got to do it for yourself. You've got to put it to work for yourself. Hallelujah. You know, it all goes by revelation. Someone asked me recently, he said, yeah, but you know, if you're reading the Bible, it says, you know, you, you, you do this, you do that, but why are we not seeing it? I said, well, if the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? That's what Jesus said. If the light that's within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? And I opened up and said, listen, it, it goes with revelation. It's revelation. Revelation is revealing. When something is revealed to you, it's impossible for it to be taken from you. That's what we need. Revelation. Come on, somebody. Revelation. How do you get revelation? By spending time with God. I mean, the author of the book of Revelation, the Apostle John, was a disciple whom Jesus loved. Jesus had many disciples, but the Bible says him whom he loved. It means there's something special about John. There's something special. Peter, James, and John, closest disciples, they were on the inner circle. That means you can be a believer, but just believe. It. But you can be one that will say, hey, I want to be in the inner circle. I don't want to be where God was. I don't want to be where he was. I want to be where he is. Amen. Hallelujah. Emmanuel, God is with us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, Spirit. Thank you, Father. 
Father, that we can commune with you, have fellowship with you. Thank you, Lord, that you are so close to us. Thank you that you are mindful of us. Thank you for the future that you have planned for us. Thank you, Father, that in this life we are not alone. Thank you, Lord, that in this life you are our helper, you are our strength, our comfort, you are our everything. We thank you, Lord, O oh God, for righteousness which has been imparted to us through Christ Jesus, your Son. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. Thank you so much, O oh God. Thank you for all the blessings wherewith you have blessed us. Blessed are you, O Lord God, who daily loads us with benefits. We thank you, Lord, O God. Thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you for all you are doing and all you're going to do. Thank you in advance. But now, o Lord God, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Rest and abide with each and every one of us, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' blessed name. Lord bless you, child of God. Lord keep you in the palm of his hands. Lord God, be with you, both now and forevermore. To him, to Christ Jesus alone, your praise, glory, and honor, both now and forevermore. Jesus' magnificent name, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In Jesus' name, the people of God say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Miracles were for Israel. Miracles were for Israel when you read the Bible. Miracles were for Israel. Everybody on the outside did not experience it. But God demonstrated his power and his glory in the nation of Israel. God will demonstrate his power and his glory in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You were made for signs and wonders. Tell somebody I was made for a sign and a wonder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Please just remember as we leave it, I just want to remind the church, please remember all policies have been put in place to ensure all our own safety. No hugging, please. No hugging. No touching. Please. Please. Amen. I told you long even before we even put in the protocol, I said you just, God bless you. That's all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You understand? You don't have to physically touch.
touch somebody. But listen, you understand, it's in the same way we pray for somebody there, the power of God meets them there. In other words, there is something that connects you. So just by way, by raising your hand, just say, God bless you. You understand? You don't have to physically touch somebody. I'm, I'm just saying that for your own safety. For everybody's safety. Come on, somebody. Because I don't want them to be told that, yeah, you know, I touched so and so in church. Maybe they No, you will not be up yet. You will not be up yet. Maybe in the supermarket, but not in God's house. I'm sorry. Talk to me. Now remember Prophet Douglas once he was praying for somebody and this person was possessed and somebody ran to go and get a bucket because the person was going to bring up. He said, no, you leave that bucket. This is Prophet Purvis speaking. He says, this is not TV Joshua. You're not going to vomit yet. He says, listen, these cars were paid for with God's money. You will not miss these carpets. You will not vomit yet. But you will get out now. Amen. The person was set free without vomit. That's what I'm saying. You will not pick that thing up here in this house. It's God's house. Talk to me somebody. Listen, we have to be grown up about this. I mean, you know, people forget. They go everywhere else except the house of God. And the day they come to the house of God, then, ah, I think it's church, but you're not there. No. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God has blessed the government with wisdom, knowledge, to help us protect ourselves, and that is what we enforce. We still respect the government. We still respect their decisions. We still abide by the laws of the country, that govern the country. Out of respect for them, we still maintain our social distance. No hugging. Maybe you can tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I love you very much. I'd love to hug you, but God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. 